A portion of this video is brought to you by AG1. Now, if you went onto the internet and you looked up funicular, I don't know why you would, but I did. This is what you'd find. Videos of fun looking trains that go up and down hills, also known as incline railings. And I want to ride them. So for the next 48 hours, we'll be traveling across the US to ride the three most significant funiculars in the country. Why, I don't really know. But to bring you up to speed, we ended last week's episode on aerial tramways right here in New York City. And yes, while they have some iconic railways in transit, like this, the New York City subway, I mean, really, this is one of the most used transit systems in the world. Sounds a lot better than I thought it would. And maybe unsurprisingly is the fact that it's the world's longest subway system and has the most stations. Now, speaking of which, this is ours. Now, New York City also has the busiest commuter railway in North America, which is the LIRR, or as I like to call it, the LUR. I don't think anyone else calls it that. That's right, the Long Island Railroad. Look at that! Okay, that's fun. But these trains aren't that interesting, so we're gonna keep going, and next is the air train which I'll admit is a very cool name, but isn't all that special in itself, other than the fact that it's getting us to JFK, where we're jumping onto a plane and flying to the beautiful Pittsburgh. We must be in Pittsburgh. Yes, I rented a car and we're off to ride our first funicular. Oh my gosh. Is this blood? At the light, take a slight left turn. I mean, that's blood, right? Trains don't usually do well on hills, but this one we're gonna see is built for hills. Oh, it's getting hilly. We're going down a hill. That's a good sign. We've come all this way to ride this. The Monongahela. 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 Monongahela? Monongala. I think they call it the Monongala. Correct me if I'm wrong. Incline Railway is also a historic landmark. Just my luck. It's too bad it's closed because this is the oldest and steepest funicular in America. Even though it's close for maintenance, they are running it today. They're really cute stations. They're really well kept. Oh, these are great. Monongahela. Monongahela. I think that's it. Mon Monongahela? Monongahela. We'll go with that. Well, we've come this far. Let's drive up the hill and see what's up there. Not much else to say about the Monongahela. It's a nice view, top of Mount Washington. This funicular was built in 1870 to connect the community at the top of the embankment with the river and the bridge to Pittsburgh below. Like it's a nice little community up here. This building was built in 1893, which is 25 years after the funicular, which means this building might not have been here without the funicular. Wow. Small little railway, big impact. It also has a pretty nice viewing platform to look out over the whole city. Look at this. But lucky for us, Pittsburgh has another one down the road that is running today. So we're gonna go ride that. And while I drive a mile down the road to get there, let me tell you about the sponsor of this portion of the video, AG1. I mean, it says right on the pack, AG1 is comprehensive and complete daily nutrition with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including probiotics and adaptogens. And the reason that's so useful for me is because sometimes it's difficult to make sure I'm getting what my body needs while I'm traveling. And so AG1 makes it easy for me. And the best part is that even when I'm traveling, they have these handy little travel packs that make it easy for me to make sure I get what my body needs while I'm on the road. AG1 is more than just a greens powder with natural energy supporting ingredients like vitamin B12 and performance and recovery support with magnesium and superfoods. And considering how healthy the ingredients are, it actually tastes pretty good, which makes for an easy daily habit. Just one scoop of AG1, eight ounces of water, shake and enjoy. But don't take it from me, try AG1 for yourself. Go to athleticgreens.com slash downylive and you'll get a year's supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free travel packs. Thank you, AG1. Where is everybody? That's where we're going. This is the parking lot. There's nobody here. Downtown Pittsburgh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Duquesne Incline Railway, AKA a funicular. Maybe the reason this one is still here is that it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. So it's gotta be worth riding. You see, the whole point of a transit system is to connect people to places. And I just don't know what this connects to. That's okay, let's go ride it anyways. That's nice. Incline railways are interesting because they're kind of like a railway because they're on tracks, but they're also kind of like an elevator. Last trip, 12.40 a.m. This thing runs late. 
five dollars. It goes right in there. You still use it. Look at that. Cool. This is beautiful. What year was this built? 1877? April 12th is his birthday. That's exciting. Look at this. Historic landmark. 1877. All right, let's give it a go. Wow, the details. This lovely little funicular will take us 400 feet up along a 30 degree angle at just over four miles per hour. How cute is this? How cute is this? All right, well, I guess it's just us. It's not much to it. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's electric. All right, that's the bell, here we go. Wow. And maybe one of the most unusual things about it is that it uses a wider than normal track gauge, which is only used in Finland, Russia, and Mongolia. So a funicular or an inclined railway runs on tracks like a train and it's pulled by a cable to the top. Because they're attached to the same cable, they move at the same speed at the same time and the weight of one counteracts the weight of the other. So it's actually not that difficult to get it moving. You know, if this was full of people, it would be very heavy, but there's the whole weight of the one going down that helps to pull this up. I mean, really, funiculars are a very clever way to get people up and down a very steep slope, which is exactly what we have here in Pittsburgh. I still haven't figured out why it's here, but we'll see what's at the top. The detail in all of this. I feel like I've traveled back in time. That was amazing. This put a smile on my face. Oh, this is great. They let you go downstairs and underneath to see the hoisting equipment. So this is the car we came up on. There's the cable underneath it. It comes up here, goes around a wheel up there, comes under this wheel and into, wow, the machine shop. Look at the size of that. I'm blown away. This is a living, breathing museum here as well, not just a little elevator ride to the top of a mountain. Realistically, top of a big hill, it's not, not a mountain. <laughs> this is much more impressive than I expected. So the Duquesne incline was closed in 1962, but David Miller here, one of the neighbors who lived at the top, got all the neighbors together and they built the rehabilitation group, which took over and have continued operating it since 1963. That's pretty neat. The Duquesne Incline would not be here today without the residents of Duquesne Heights saving it and now running it as a nonprofit to preserve the Incline Railway for us to ride. So at the top of the hill is a community. Apartment buildings, homes. It has a great view of Pittsburgh from the top. I can see the appeal of living up here. So while Pittsburgh has the oldest inclined railway, let's head to Los Angeles to ride the shortest railway in America. All right, back to the airport we go. So cue up the montage music to skip us ahead by a few hours. Bringing us to tonight, or now, here at the Vermont and Sunset Metro Station. This station is inspired by 1950s science fiction. Wait, LA has a metro? Yeah, I didn't know that either. This station, being the closest to the famous Griffiths Observatory, is designed with space in mind. It has design elements of celestial orbits on the floor and overhead a star chart mapping the Earth's placement in the universe. Details are to be found all over the station. It's maybe not the most beautiful station, with most metro stations looking kind of all the same, it's nice to have a few of them that stand out, just for being a little bit unique. And the elevator shaft is domed to mimic the observatory itself. Now let's move on from one star-themed station to another slightly different star-themed station. And so here we are at the corner of Hollywood and Vine, walking amongst the stars on the famous Walk of Fame. This is the Hollywood and Vine station, which has the most detail and decorations of any station in the entire metro system. The pillars are designed to look like palm trees, obviously. In the center of the station are two movie projectors donated by Paramount Pictures and a nod to the yellow brick road in the halls. And the whole ceiling is covered in 35 millimeter reels. Honestly, noticing these little details helps to kind of pass some of the time while waiting for your next train. 
It was even called America's best transportation system at some point. And lucky for us, the Pershing Square is the station that we're actually here to get out at. We're going around the corner to the Angel's Flight. And this metro ride is taking us to our final stop. It should just be on the left. Now this is a funicular, similar to the other two incline railways we saw earlier, but it's slightly different. There are three rails, whereas the Pittsburgh funiculars had four rails, or two fully separated tracks. This means that this track splits in the middle. You can see as the cars come together, they do actually pass here before they come back together. So this is the Angel's Flight, also possibly technically America's shortest railway. Yes, it's another funicular, but uh, it is technically part of the metro system here in LA. So it, it's one of the Pershing Square connections where we just walked from. All right, let's take it. There's no one here. Look at this woodwork, again, beautiful. So as far as I can tell, we just walk on and we pay at the top. And the whole thing is slightly stepped and you can sit outside on the front deck. Two cars, just like the last ones, one coming down as one goes up and it has a passing point in the middle. And we're off. Now they say that it runs every two minutes because it takes a minute to get to the top and then another minute to unload and reload people. Here's our passing point. It's beautiful. This is a nice ride. The Angel's Flight costs just a dollar. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because we're here at night or because of the orange paint job. But I think this is a beautiful piece of railway heritage that I'm glad they've kept alive. Technically, there is a staircase right next to it, so you don't have to ride it, but why wouldn't you? It's easy for someone to say it's not worth keeping around anymore, but I think they are. Next week, we're moving on from heritage to the future of transportation in America. Riding on one of the most difficult elevators to engineer, riding on a system of autonomous pods, and of course, the infamous monorail. So come back and ride along with me right here on Downey Live, because frankly, I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. I'll see you next week.